This video is going to include a discussion of half-life and radioactive dating that we have talked about in class. We'll start with the idea of radioactive decay. So we have a large element. This is uranium-238. It is an unstable element and will spontaneously decay by releasing an alpha particle and some gamma radiation and then a daughter element that comes out of that. And that would be thorium-234. And this is a natural process. And if I have a radioactive sample of a certain amount of grams of uranium-238, it will take a significant amount of time for uh, that to decay as the half-life for radioactive decay for uranium is pretty large, pretty long. So it just gives you an idea that radioactive decay is something that spontaneously occurs. You don't necessarily always have to have a big particle that comes off. What if we have a radioisotope that gives off some radiation, maybe a beta particle or something like that, and does produce a another daughter isotope. And again, the beta particle, electron or positron, whatever it is, would come off at a pretty high velocity because there's a lot of energy associated with that. And that, again, is a naturally occurring radioactive decay. The goal of this lesson is to talk about the timing of that, the half-life, how long it takes for half of the element, the radioactive element, to decay. And it turns out it is an exponential decay. So if we have a radioactive decay of isotope X, and we have the following graph that does curve downwards, and the trend line that associates these points together is, is a uh, exponential decay. We don't need to worry about the mathematics involved with this. What we need to be concerned about is the half-life that's involved, the time it takes for half of the element to decay. Let's say we start with 200 grams of this radioactive element, actually 200 kilograms. Let's see what happens when we drop to half of it. So half of 200 would be 100. And if I go over here that I go down, that's two hours. So it takes two hours for half of this to decay. So we're going to say that the half-life, T sub half, is equal to two hours. So that means every two hours, half of this element would then disappear or radioactively decay. So let's test that theory. So now I have 100, gram, 100 kilograms. And if I divide that by two, I get 50. And I go over here, that's four total hours that it took. So that's two more hours there. So four hours would be two half-lives. Now let's take it in half again. Half of that would be 25. And I see that I'm at six hours. And uh, that would be another two hours that it took for that half to go away, which now is three half-lives. So this, this time duration we'll label as the first half-life. The second time duration, of course, is the second half-life. This is the third half-life. And we can even go one more, six to eight, that's another two hours. That's the fourth half-life. So we can determine how many half-lives, you know, do go by here and figure out the age of this particular element or sample, how long it's been radioactively decaying. And that's kind of the goal of our lab that we're going to be working on, which is the carbon dating lab. Let's take a look at that now. So this is a, a sample. You've got a fossil here, and we want to figure out how old it is. Now we're pretending that there is a particularly radioactive isotope in this rock that's been sitting there for a long time. And that isotope has a half-life of 54,000 years, you know, much larger than our two hours for our first example. And let's say, based on analysis of today, we expect the radioactivity of this particular element to be 7,400 becuros. Now, you don't need to worry about the unit becuros. It's just a name after a very famous person for radioactivity. We abbreviate that as capital B, small q. Now there's a Geiger counter here measuring how much radioactivity is actually coming out of this rock right now. And we see that it's been reduced to 925. So some time has gone by since this fossil has been formed. And the radioisotope in there has been decaying. And it's our job to figure out how old this rock is. To do that, you take the expected radioactive rate of 7400 and we will divide that by 925 and we'll see what that result is. So 7400 
divided by 925 uh, gives me an answer of 8. So what this means is this radioactive rate of 925 picurals is 8 times less than what's expected. So we want to figure out how many half-lives have gone by. To do that, you're going to use a simple expression, 2 to the x is equal to 8. And you got to think what power 2 has been raised to to get 8. Well, that's going to be 3. 2 cubed is equal to 8. What this means is 3 half-lives have gone by since the formation of this fossil. So if we want to figure out how old it is, we're going to take the T half-life again. And that's listed up there at 54,000 years. We're simply going to times this by 3 because three half-lives have gone by. So I'll take 5, 4, 0, 0, 0 times 3 equals. So this fossil is 1,6200 or 162,000 years old. So that's how we use carbon dating. Okay, we're going to follow the same process of this. This one here uh, particularly is an element that is kind of made up as an example here that has a half-life of 54,000 years. But okay, now let's look at the simulation that I have for you to try. There is a sedimentary rock base in here, and there are layers A through G. Uh, layer A is pointing to this brown top layer. B, of course, this grayish layer, and all the way down to here. We're going to be looking at fossils from each of those layers and try to identify their relative age based on years. So what you need to do for the simulation is click the A button and a fossil will appear. And then you come down here. This is the Geiger counter, a digital one. You hit the green button and it's going to reveal for you the present radioactive rate coming out of this particular fossil, and that's 42,601. Now, based on the simulation, if you read, uh, I programmed the simulation, okay, with the half-life of, of carbon, 14, which is 5,730 years, and I've also revealed for you all this in the worksheet that goes with it, that the expected rate of radiation in Bacurial should be 84,000, uh, 202. So we see once again that the Geiger counter is reading something less than what's expected because some time has come by and some radioactive decay has occurred. So how can we figure out the age of this particular fossil? Well, back to our you know example from before, we're going to take the expected, which is 85,202, and again that's listed in the worksheet. We're going to divide this by 42,601, and we're going to get the number 2. Okay, So then I'm going to say 2 to the x power uh, equals 2. Well, that's x equals 1. 2 to the first power is equal to 2. So for this fossil, only one half-life has gone by. And again, listed in the worksheet, the half-life for carbon-14 is 5,000. 730 years. So if I times this by 1, of course, the age of my sample is 5,730 years. Okay, I'll label that up there. And that's how you're going to do the simulation. You know, go to each layer and figure out uh, what the age is. Make sure you round all of the numbers to whole numbers that are divisible by 2, by the way. Remember, there's always a little bit of data fluctuation in any kind of experiment that we do. So make sure you do round them all to whole numbers divisible by two. Okay, and that's our lab and our simulation that you can work on. And we'll finish up in class tomorrow.